side of red or switch they die. Rob of the dog who loud his motorbike. Looking for legends on the sunset strip. With a stone cold paranormal partnership. That's what time Rick tried to sell me some crack. Listen to the podcast, man, and take that shit back. It's a legends. The podcast of urban legends. And here your host, Neil and Chris. You'll receive our pod in your ears tonight. Hello and welcome to this week's Urban Legend, the internet. Uh, largest urban legends podcast by volume uh so uh before i introduce us i've got a bit of a mea culpa to go with which is uh i think latin for i fucked up um so i've been given out uh the incorrect email address so if anyone i mean it is on the info but it is herb urb dot legends with an s dot podcast at gmail.com we found it out because someone was trying to get hold of us and managed to via uh the twitter account in the end but just thought i'd clear that up uh i am man who can't remember email addresses chris flynn and with me as always is my beautiful assistant it's mr neil Herbert. hi neil how you doing yeah you're doing all right yeah had a nice Aww. week so far um, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, work and whatnot. Mm. A lot of people, um, we've got a lot of new listeners, and a lot of people ask how Neil and I met, so um, Neil, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll tell the story. Oh, yeah, if you want to, go, go for it. So um, Neil and I met oh, many moons ago, so like 17 years ago or something, and we were both by chance working at a, a, a big organisation. Um, and we kind of like sort of on, you know, like nodding terms. So sort of we didn't really know each other or anything. But what they used to do at this organization, um, they used to have a big weekly meeting on a Friday for sort of the whole organization. And because the CEO was quite a religious person, we had to do it in a swimming pool in the basement. I think it was like sort of baptismal thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I always felt quite. Um, quite self-conscious about it because I have a big back piece tattoo of Beaker from the Muppets. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was kind of like nervously kind of taking my shirt off and that. And I looked over and I saw Neil had a big back piece tattoo of Professor Peabody from the Muppets. And so I thought, oh, okay. And so, you know, we started talking. It turns out not only did we both like the Muppets, but we were both also former Yakuza. And yeah. from then, we've kind of been quite firm friends, haven't we? You were part of the Port Slave Yakuza, of course. Yeah. And I was part of the um, Brunswick area Yakuza in Hove. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, when they looked at sort of like how the Hell's Angels had sort of stretched out around, around yeah. the world, they tried it as a little experiment, and they just thought they'd do yeah, it. Yeah, the Yakuza tried it, didn't the, they? The seedier parts of Brighton. But uh, didn't really didn't really take off, did it, let's be honest. But uh, No, I mean, we may have gone Worth in. losing a little finger for, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, no, I got well, to meet some nice people. Got to meet some nice people, had some good food. Yeah. Nice sake. Yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely. And, um, you know, we, we, I think at the time we, we were both no a little, salary men, we. we were both a little bit kind of nervous about letting people see our back piece ta- Muppet style tattoos. But I think now it's hot enough waters passed under the bridge that we're both, we're both fine with it. Yeah, I don't mind sort of taking my top off, really. like down the beach or when I'm sitting at a bus stop or something. Like you know, have a look. It's fine. You know, it's all part of me. It's all part of my the rich, the rich and varied tapestry that is me, Chris. I mean, some would describe you as aggressively shirtless. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, that's something which has Some been jewelry jeans. Claims she's got a nice pair, nice pair of tight jeans around the horse. Uh, top off, 
pot belly hanging over the top. Get down. Bit of string to hold them up. Street, Western Road. There's nothing illegal about it. No, it's true. Should be, but isn't. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd let everyone know. Um, so, yeah, we're coming into the, the tail end of uh, this series, Neil. Are we going to finish on a high? Oh, well, you'd hope so. We haven't really figured out what the uh, finale will be yet, have we? No, not yet. Mm, we'll have to have a think about that. And what I would also say is between this series and the start of the next, we might take a little break Um because we want to have a little think and sort some stuff out, but we'll put out some of the Chop Shop old episodes from Series 1 like we did between this series and the last series. So there'll still be something coming out, but it might be a couple of weeks before there's anything new once we finish this, which will be in like a month or so. Um, Just because we're going for a very data-driven approach, aren't we? Well, absolutely, yeah. Money money ball, you know, like Brighton Hove, Albion football team, like with their transfers. That kind of thing. So we're going to really dig into the date, big data. Well, I've bought this IBM computer from the sixties, which was mm. absolutely, uh, you know, yes, it was, it was an amazing piece of tech in you know, nineteen sixty-eight. So, and we've been putting all the data, the analytics yeah, that crunch. we get from sort of Acast and Spotify, and we've been putting all them on punch cards. Yeah, and and we're going to feed feed all that in and uh, see what it says. See what it yeah. says. We've got lots of data points now. Can't remember how many episodes we put out. Maybe 150 or something by now. Be around that, wouldn't it? Yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, uh, just letting you know that. Um, so uh, we're going to dive into it. We're doing this on a Saturday night. Mm. Um, so Neil, I don't know what you've got planned. I'm going down to listen to some Wigfield. Going to listen to some Wigfield. Going to end town. Yeah. The song Saturday Night by Wigfield or one of our others. Believe that's. I've, um, I've probably just yeah. <laughs> can't actually name any other songs, but I don't no know one if can. did any other songs. But you would assume so. There was probably an album, but you think so? But it might just you might just have been a one hit wonder. Might have just done it for a laugh. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm going down the bingo. Meet some ladies. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm going to get a cash too. Yep. Yeah. Points me prizes down the bingo. That's oh, for yes. sure. Britain's been going mad. Apparently, that's what that's what they that's uh, what the say. Has been saying. Yeah. That's what they say down the gala. Nice. Um, <laughs> so now, what chicken in a basket for dinner? No, no, I'm going to eat before I go. Oh, okay. Yeah, save my pennies. Pounds look after themselves, Neil. That's true. Got to remember that um, you know, fix the roof while the sun's shining. An economy is very much like a household budget, says someone who. Has absolutely no idea what an economy is, but weirdly ends up being chancellor. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I'll be yeah. honest. I'll be honest with you. My household doesn't have people doing ultra fast trading with algorithm computers under the stairs, so it's not quite the same as a household. Well, that's budget. part of the problem, isn't it? Yeah, that is part of the problem. We need Maybe to get finance get... more involved into our world. Yeah, I need to get yeah. get more algorithms around the house. Um, so, Neil, what are we talk about today? Right. So we're going to be talking about the. Uh... So I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but that Ninky Nanka. Ninky so, Nanka. Ninky Nanka. So this is... Can I guess it's... where it's from? Go on, then. Wales. No, it would... Um, Close? I think, there'd, I think there'd be less um, vowels, in, vowels in it if there was English right. in Wales. Can I have another guess? Go on, then. Patagonia. No, it, Africa. I'll tell you that much. Oh, Africa. Well, South America used to be attached to Africa, so I was as close as a... Yeah, you could have said Pangaea or whatever, and then, you know, we might have... Pangaea, yeah. Pangaea, yeah, yeah, whatever you pronounce that. But um, that's, your, that's because you don't know geography, that's what your answer to where anything is, is isn't yeah, it? You just it, go, oh, Pangaea. Yeah, well, te- well, technically, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ma- yeah. Hey, mate, can you can you uh, give me directions to local post office? Pangaea. Pangaea. Yeah. Pangaea. Don't worry about it. I'm ter- I'm absolutely terrible sense of direction. I remember yeah. living, I used to live around King's Cross, and somebody um, I got out for a walk, and somebody asked me where the station was, and I was like, oh, "There's no train station around here, mate." It was only like a day late. I was like, "You live in King's Cross, you tit." I think that might have been the one he was looking for. Anyway, that's. Uh, I think that's that's the only thing that I that I'm better than you at is geography or directions. Yeah, my general spatial awareness. Well, that was yeah. another feature when I lived in London. Just getting lost was very easy. Just 
turn around once. A GPS has been a godsend, like with smartphones and things. <laughs> so I could just literally go for a walk for 20 minutes and then get completely lost. Spend half an hour trying to reorient myself. Is that why you're constantly having to go at IQ tests? Because some of it's about spatial awareness, and so therefore you discount it as an IQ test. Yeah, that's the exact reason. That's exactly that's the only that, that can only that can only be the reason. Yeah, can't be anything else. Um, so, uh, Nicky Nanky. They have a purpose, I suppose. But anyway, yeah, anyway, uh, Ninky Nanky. Um, Ninky Nanky. Ninky Nanky. No. Ninki Nanka, excuse me. Ninki so Nanka, it's, it's from, okay. I think it's generally from the Gambia. Um, but oh, I've been there. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah, I went to the Gambia. Oh, okay. Mm. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. I don't I tell was... you everything. Well, no. No, you must have known. I went with this, with my ex years ago. Oh, I've probably just forgotten. Yeah, yeah, I mean, my life isn't that interesting, so... <laughs> yeah. No, no, fair enough. No, no I, went to, I went to the Gambia. It's really, really tiny country, uh, surrounded by Senegal. Yes, because it's also it's uh, apparently it's been reported in Guinea and Senegal, but it seems like it's mostly associated with Gambia, from what I've seen. It's um, pretty much yeah, it's pretty much like a long strip of land that sort of goes like north and south of a river. So yeah, I assume a lot of beach land isn't there as well. I believe it's supposed to be quite nice. It's got a nice beach. Yeah. I mean, there's not there's not loads of it. I mean, I think the whole I think Gambia from north from east to west, it's a couple hundred miles. Okay, but north to south, which is kind of where the beach would be, because it's yeah. on the uh, west coast of Africa, um, maybe seventy miles. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I've never actually been to. Africa I was there during. I was I was there. Uh, and we got we got forced to leave. Because the there was elections, I didn't stupidly, you know, like you should do before you go on holiday anyway. You should check to see if there's going to be elections during your time there. Um, and the guy Jamal, uh, who was kind of like a bit of dictator, he uh, refused to accept the election outcome. And then so like the sort of uh, African sort of Senegal and stuff started to kind yeah. of sending gunships to kind of warn him to get the fuck out. And um yeah, they made they made us leave. That they um mm. the Thomas Cook, I think, or whatever, made us go. And and it was completely safe, right, where we were. Like yeah, in the yeah. capital it was a bit hairy, but we were just like down on a beach. So it was fine. But yeah, they were like, well, you have to get this flight or other you know, or we Get your own flight sure, back, sort of thing. Imagine, yeah. Um, but the thing is, like, we got held up at the airport loads, and the reason was was because the guy Jamal was getting his plane nice and loaded up with stuff from the treasury before fucking off to um, live out his days. Where did he go? I think it's Equatorial Guinea. He, he okay. went to, like, and just went, just took all, took loads of money out of the treasury and went there. <laughs> so we didn't have. So he actually Public left service, before then. us. Yeah, yeah. good guy. Good guy. <laughs> yeah, but nice country, nice people, very poor country. Well, I mean, main I export, the main, ex, main export is peanuts. Okay, they've got good uh, chocolate there as well. I think I've heard. No, not that I saw. I might, might be confused. lovely peanut-based curries. Oh, okay, all well, nice. Called dom- domada. Yeah, lovely like chicken and peanuts. Mm. Mm. Lovely bit of rice. I've yeah. actually made it. I've actually made it back in England because I liked it so much. Not so much. Yeah, no, it's always good to go somewhere and um, you know try the local food. I and mean, that was the thing I thought was a bit sad about uh, Colombia. They're just uh, taking over real kind of like it's all more courts and stuff and uh, fried chicken. But there, oh, really? is, there is traditional Colombian food. I think it's just something they sort of like the stew they put in a leaf, but you can't. You can't really. Yeah, it's, or where I was over there, it was what, westernized. Point. Yeah, it was quite westernised. I think people were staying with as well. It was kind of like it was, you know, sort of a bit more of an aspirational culture where you'd eat more like American type food rather than. Um, but hey ho, each to their own. Yeah, um, there we go. So, yeah, it's good good to discover new things, isn't it? Um, mm. Anyway, Ninky Nanka. So, what is it, Neil? It's basically a bit of a cryptid. So it's been described as the African Nessie. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah. 
Oh dear, like the um, the Australian Nessie. Yes. Right. And which the, is which? Which was the pike or something we discovered? We found out. Oh yeah, that was just like a large eel or something or a large fish. Um, but it's actually it's been the subject of um, a cryptozoology kind of visit. In, so it's been, got okay. a couple of articles here from BBC News and the Independent. But I think I'm mainly going to read from um, the Encyclopedia of Cryptozoology because they seem to have quite a lot of the different sightings. But we'll dip in as well. There's a couple of articles from the BBC and the Independent about a 2006 hunt for the uh, for the creature. Okay. Um, but they, they're more about cryptozoology than the creature itself a little bit. So I'll, I'll sort of dip in and out between these three articles, I think. We'll okay. see how we go. And, cool. and, of course, the wiki article, which is a bit short. Hey, we can never learn too much about cryptozoology methods now. No, exactly. We may need Not to if we're planning on there. getting our uh, History Channel 2 series commissions. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, any old slot that... Well, I mean, we're cheap, aren't we? I mean, we are cheap, We yeah. churn out content, so I would imagine those are the churn two... Churn out a lot of content. Those are the two main things that they're looking for in modern media these days. The yeah, pretty much. creators. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we're, yeah, we're content creators. We're not artists. I mean, they could just use AI, but we're sort of there to be the bottom of the barrel. So we're, we're just we're proving slightly that you can be worse than AI. We're slightly cheaper than AI. Yeah. That's the thing. When you factor in the cost of, you know, electricity and stuff to run the yeah, computer. Yeah, right. actually, that's, yeah that's, you can actually undercut that. Yeah, it can undercut it easily. So, Ninkinanka. Yeah, it's a cryptid river monster reported in Gambia often described as a dragon, and it became well-known, or relatively well-known, in 2006 due to the Centre for Forty and Zoology's Gambian Expedition, which received a bit of media coverage, hence the articles on the BBC and in The Independent. So, an early austere description of the Ninki Nanka in 1944 referred to an enormous reptilian monster that comes out at night from the ooze and slime of the mangrove marshes and devours whatever it meets. Oh. Did you see any mangrove marshes where you were? No. Yeah. No. No. Um, I mean, obviously, you're gonna, I'm going to assume you you didn't have a sighting of the of any kind of dragon type creatures either. No, a handless monkey took exception to me. Oh, okay. But that seems like a fairly <laughs> reasonable beast. Yeah. No, most Hand, of the monkeys. A handless are... monkey. We had their hands. No, uh, one of its hands has been lost. I think it was a, it was a it was That's a fight. Cool. It was a fighter. Yeah, okay. like the other, there was quite a lot. I mean, that's the amazing thing. There's loads of monkeys there, and they're like jumping that's on cool. your um, balcony and stuff. Um, and most of them were absolutely fine, but this one took particular exception to me. Wasn't having it. I think it's because I had a Frankie Says Relax t shirt on and he had certain views. Oh, you think he was a bit of a homophobic yeah, monkey? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. It's unfortunate. It is. The other interesting thing is because it's um, nominally. Uh, a Muslim country, hmm. the people there don't really drink. Okay. But my goodness, do they smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> oh, There's well, kind of, enough. they've got like quite a strong Rastafarian culture okay, there. Element, yeah. Yeah. I had some and then uh, a guy was like, oh, do you want some? And I went, yeah, I'll give it a go because I've smoked in the past. It's absolutely knocked you out. I felt really weird walking along the beach. It's <laughs> 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 like I was with someone. <laughs> I was like, oh, I feel sort of slightly out of my own body at the moment. <laughs> I didn't have the tolerance. No, no. In 1935, it was described to Dr. Thomas Hardy Dale Rimple as an animal which mainly lives submerged in mud in the mangrove forests, only mm. coming out on moonlit nights. It had the face of a horse, a neck like a giraffe, a body like a crocodile, and was around 30 foot in length. But an attitude like Liza Minnelli. That's pretty good. I've got time for Liza Minnelli. It's pretty funny in the rest of the development as well, I thought. Not too fancy or something. No, no, I'll tell, no, I'll tell you what, I've, um, I don't know that much about her, but uh, what's the um, Ruby Wax? She's a comedian. Yeah. It can be quite good, but I I find her quite disrespectful of her guests, which if she's got a horrible yeah. person on, like she's doing a Melda Marks or whatever, fair enough. But she... Yeah. Um, she can be downright rude to some people I've always found. But anyway, um, the one that really made me laugh, she had on Liza Minnelli and sort of mm. attempted to take the mickey out of her. And the, the way that Liza Minnelli had sort of dealt with the whole situation, which was just a stunning kind of show of star power, mm. she kept 
holding her off and holding her off. And it's like, oh, sorry, darling, I've got to go and do this. Oh, sorry, I've got to mm. do, do, do that. So she's never met. And then literally the whole joke became about how she never turned up to anything. And then she just suddenly burst into this hotel door, sang a song out loud, and then walked out again. <laughs> and it, but it was just really funny because she clearly knew what was going on and t- completely controlled it, which I just thought, absolute respect. That's really funny. Because, um, mm. yeah, like Ruby Wax didn't have anything to say yeah, to that. She, she's, um, yeah, sort of um, a cervic sort of... So it's like she was big, she was big in the UK in sort of the eighties and nineties, really, because we didn't really have that kind of acerbic American sort of rudeness, I guess. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, we, I think I think that there is an amount of that, and although it's kind of like the, the American rudeness, where it's you know pretending to be polite, but um, mm. but she was very yeah very. I mean, she's been a lot of good things, Ruby Wax. She's very sassy. Her, but, yeah. But like, I prefer it where she's got a guest where you'll, you know, yeah, you don't you want don't to be like rooting for the guest, basically. Um, mm. she, she can be quite um, abrasive. Anyway. So, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of mangrove, et cetera, in uh, Gambia because it's basically, it's, it's the country is around the river Gambi, mm-hmm. which is quite a massive wide river. And then, it, yeah, the country pretty much just follows. If you have a look at it on a map, it's quite funny because it, it's a weird. It's it's one of the weirder outlines of a country. Okay. It kind of like properly just follows the river. Follows the river. So yeah. it kind of like there's like a block at the sea, and then it kind of goes up and down and stuff all around. And then all around it is uh, Senegal. Which reminds me a little bit because there's a there's one border or there's one part of a border that's um, defined by where a river goes somewhere in Europe. I think it might be between. Italy and somewhere well, else. There's, a few, there's a few of them. There's probably a few of those, yeah. But no, it's just because this river has actually been moving around, so it's, it's caused oh, all really? sorts of. Yeah, I mean, it's in an area where there was not really anything going on, so it's not really that big of a deal. But there's a yeah, there's but now. some. But well, yeah, you never know. It might be a land grab. <laughs> but I think there's actually an area which is kind of. It's in Europe, but it doesn't technically belong to any state. Oh, nice. Should we move there? there? Open well, a there's, there was a YouTube video of somebody actually talking about doing that. I think somebody might have tried it, but. Um, yeah, I think you get kicked out by the military in short order if you play around with that. Anyway. Yeah, I think no, I think um, you know, take to the take to the high seas and you know, just become pirates, but better better way of doing it. You reckon? Not robbing people and foot are stuff. You, are just, you good you know, on a boat? Probably not, no. Don't know nothing <laughs> about it. I've not thought this through, obviously, Chris. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, but you know, you give it another thirty years and you know, everything will be flooded. There won't be very much land left, will there? So you get ahead of it. Yeah, I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna bob around the uh, the Pacific Ring of Fire and plant a flag with my family crest in kind of whatever the newest volcanic atoll that pops up is, and go right. I live here on this boiling hot, <laughs> vegetation-free rock. Or we could lash a load of ships together. Like, was it the scar that? Mm. China me over, China me over, whatever. Yeah. yeah, 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 good book. Okay, clearly haven't thought any of this through. Um, <laughs> right, where were we? Oh, yeah, it's face of a horse, neck like a giraffe, body like a crocodile, 30 foot in length. So, you know, it's it's like one of those um medieval kind of yeah, like griffin or something like that, like some chimera or something like that. It's, um, but they seem to be, I mean. People generally tend to talk of it like it's a dragon, but say face of a horse and neck like a giraffe is another one. Um, so, yeah, well, I can see sort of the pictures that people have done of it. It's kind of got a a dragon look to it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it kind of looks like more. But I think that's, kind of I think that I think that's wishful thinking by dragon lovers, to be honest. Well, in 2000, a Gambian man interviewed by Matthew Hall drew the Nikki Naka as a kind of dragon. A long-necked animal with small legs and a large body, reputed to control water and cause floods. Oh, there you go. So, they, climate climate crisis or yeah, what climate Manka crisis? Or yeah. cryptozoology, or both. Maybe you know, maybe the excess carbon dioxide in the in the atmosphere is has made it has made, making has the made it faster. Yep. Um, according to various second-hand descriptions gathered by the Centre for Forty and Zoology in 2006, the Ninky Nanka is huge and terrible, with four legs and a horrible head. There it's ter- ter- what? Sorry, sorry. Huge this... and terrible. Right. This is the. Dis- so this is so this is the. This is the scientific description. Is it terrible? 
Well, I mean, this is the centre for 14 in zoology, so... Well, I mean, terrible's not a descriptive term. Mm. Terrible, terrible's any eye of the beholder, surely. Well, That's fair subjective. enough. I mean, they're just, you know, they're just gathering descriptions from the locals, so... Take it away. But anyway, here's some more... Here's some give, more me the, give me the facts. Here's some more descriptive. I want objective reality, not when I'm talking about... Crypto, I mean, they haven't even seen crypto. one yet. They're not exactly going to be looking where it is on the sort of, you know... Yeah, but terrible's not a descriptive term. Hideous or whatever. Well, it is, yeah. but of like a personality. It's a so taxonomy of this thing. Um, Bacus the Plodocus. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, huge and terrible. So anyway, it's got four legs mm-hmm. and a horrible head. There you go. Again, it's... Dear, dear. An animal. Oh, this, my, my patience is really you getting thin. You have to take it, I'm afraid, Chris, because it is what it is. This is my worst time I'm having. So I'm going to be dipping into the Mong 14 <laughs> business <laughs> just to annoy you. An animal resembling a crop tail, with a, but with a different head and teeth and big eyes. An enormous python-like animal with legs, bats, wings, and the ability to breathe fire. Where are the wings coming from all of a sudden? Well, you know, this is why they're, they're over myths. Unimaginably huge was another description. I thought it was, well, unimaginably 30 foot. I can imagine 30 I mean, foot. yeah, that's somebody with a fairly stunted imagination, you would suspect. <laughs> They've never seen a Godzilla movie, you know, perhaps, but... Um, or a bus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with the body covered in shining scales. I'm mean, suppose for a creature, if it was like, you know, if it was like massive, then that would, you know, it would be unimaginably, well, not unimaginably. No. Yeah. Fair as you know, if it if it lived in the fifth dimension, it would be unimaginable. But... Well, let's let's mark this up to translation, so we maybe maybe the translated, and, you know, maybe, mm. maybe 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 the word isn't as easy to translate. Um, with the body, maybe the word was maybe the word was quite. Yeah, it got mistranslated as unimaginably. He just wanted to please this guy from the fourteen to the translator, so he yeah. just tried to make it up as he went along. Who knows? Yeah, I wonder how much money he was getting. Oh yeah, you know, the the more juicy the the, exactly. the secondhand accounts, the the more. I mean, out of the fourteen times, the more sub- the more subjective and flower and flowery the prose. This is how it happens. So, um, yeah, body chubbing, honey, uh, shining scales, a crest of fire on its head, or a snake-like animal with a head like a kangaroo. I mean, just whatever you like, really. Yeah, just anything. Just do you like one of them? Um, you know, you get, you get those those um, pictures when you're a kid, and you can sort of move the sort of head and the body yeah. and the. Oh, I've got the uniform of a fireman and the head of a tarantula or something. That doesn't quite work, but anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. You're getting your stuff down the market, are you? Yeah. <laughs> head of a tarantula and wheels of a bus. Yeah. This is why I grew up like I did, Chris. <laughs> that, well, it explains it's some knock bits. Knock off children's books. Um, yeah, head like a kangaroo, that's a good one. Um, one man stated that it could grow to be the size of a 60-foot palm tree and that it, it grows larger as it moves out into the sea. The only first-hand oh. eyewitness who could be found described the... It grows the larger as it goes out to sea. Supposedly. So, it, so it's maybe the salt? <laughs> the yeah, salt. or maybe it's like sort of got some sponge-like material and then it just absorbs as it goes into the water. But only specifically salt water. But, well, I mean, I don't know if they've done freshwater tests. Well, I mean, apparently it lives in the freshwater, doesn't it, in the mangroves, so. Yeah, it says sea here, so I don't know. Um, no, I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just sharing with you what's... I'd what's like it if people get their story straight, to be honest. I mean, I think <laughs> you're asking what, a bit bringing, much it, for... bringing it to me. Is that is that your problem, that this isn't rigorously scientifically reviewed? I mean, they just... Yeah, you know, and it's making me wonder about the, the last 150 evidence. episodes. <laughs> Well, yeah. This might be the capper. This might be the one that sinks us. Um, <laughs> so the only first-hand eyewitness who could be found, so everyone else is just basically a second-hand from well, what I've heard is it is X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 160 foot, covered in reflective what? scales. 160 foot now? Yeah. Well, that covered is big. Covered in, ref- yeah, is not unimaginably big. Presumably, not unimaginably, but, no, but, yeah, but big. But still big, yeah. With a feather-like crest hanging over its horse-like face. It emerged mm. from a hole in the ground and had neither legs nor wings. What? How well, How big was a hole in the ground? Might be the sinkhole, don't know. Well, it must have been a big fucking hole. It's 160 yeah, foot. Well, it's 160 foot long. We don't know how sort of it's... Uh... <laughs> two, foot, two foot diameter. Yeah, but really skinny. 
It's like lanky, a Tony Yates little fella. Well, um, lanky bastard. And two second-hand accounts described it as having writing upon its crest and mirror-like scales are mentioned frequently. I'm writing on it now. I mean, you can see clearly people are sort of wanting to, you know, They're embellishing it, aren't they? A little. Well, you get because you get the whole. I mean, like the whole idea of. And this things. one has a laser for legs and uh, cogs on its back. Yeah. And, and it's it a does little propeller on its does, head. Yeah, it's got a propeller on its head. Does spells. Uses to cool its brain down. Instead of feet, it has uh, hovergraph hovergraph cushions things. Yeah. It yeah. has the voice of Brian Blessed. I believe, I believe it's called a skirt, isn't it? The hovercraft bit. Yes. Sorry, I didn't want to get that wrong. You know, get yeah. a lot of complaints <laughs> from the fucking hovercraft I'm lobby. Hovercraft community. Just don't, let's not even get into that. No, don't even get into that. I've with them before, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to face up to that. So. Well, that was the last time you had to change your name, wasn't it? Well, yeah. I could do, do without that noise. So when Chris, Chris Mosier investigated in 2000, he found varying attitudes towards the Ninkinanka in urban Gambia. While a Mandinka hotel cashier considered it a myth and local jewellers sold trinkets of it, mm-hmm. a Wolof taxi driver and a school teacher both regarded it as a real but frightening and taboo animal. You don't taboo, eh? Mm. Shortly afterwards, he was told by one Gambian man that the Ninkinanka had existed for a long time but was now extinct. Another informant contested this, claiming that it still existed, but was just rarely seen. Hmm. So I'm going to go through sightings in a minute, but now I think I'm going to dip into the um, the cryptozoology expedition. So this is one's from... Uh, oh, from I've just remembered something from Zambia, from Gambia, sorry. From Gambia, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, made up, I made up a drink and had it named after me at a beach cocktail bar. Do you think it's still named after you? No, there. Like you can order a crystal. So it was a, it was a, a, a gin and uh, gin and Wonjo juice because Wonjo juice is really popular out there, and I'd never had it, and it's really nice. And I thought could do a bit of gin, and uh, yeah, it's it called a gin Flynn, gin and Wonjo juice. I'm surprised I'd never thought of that, but I suppose gin is maybe not as a widely consumed a spirit over there. But yeah, if that's their like, if that's a really popular juice, I'm surprised nobody thought to mix it with gin before. Well, they're not drinkers, so it would need oh, someone. Of course, yeah, you mentioned that earlier. Sorry, it would need some. It would. It would need country. someone Western to ask. But again, I'm surprised somebody didn't go. I'll put some gin in this. Oh, do you want to? I don't know whether it's, it's quite a dark, dark tale. Yeah, basically, the first British person who turned up. Yeah, yeah. I'll have a, I'll have a pint of lager and some gin in this. <laughs> Juice is quite nice. Put some gin in it. Yeah, make it more alcoholic. Um, shall I tell the story? Bill will edit it out if you want. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, so one thing which you don't realise until you get to the Gambia is that for certain uh, el- elderly, it was not elderly, but like sort of women in their fifties oh, or okay, whatever, so sex tourism. Maybe yes. don't get too much into this. Yeah, yeah actually, so I do the, remember you telling me about this now. Yeah, so there's that yeah. kind of thing going on. And I just remember at our hotel, there was a, a, ma- a wedding ceremony, right? And it was like all of these people from Oop North somewhere, um, I think like Burnley or something. And Birmingham's not even North. Burnley. Oh, Burnley, sorry, yeah. And they were called them like all like hey, sort of partying and stuff and looked really happy. Yeah. And um the uh, the Gambian family were kind of like, you know, like sort of there as well. Yeah. And it was this woman who must have been 60, and she was getting married to this. I mean, I'm gonna say boy, because he I don't think he was more than 18, if that, but he looked young yeah. <laughs> and he just looked terrified. But I think the family would have encouraged him because it's a better life and he can send money back and stuff. But I was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize. I mean, we're all we're all well aware of the male sex tourism trade. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, clearly, um, you know, that it, there's to a lesser extent, but it still happens a, a sort of female one as well, and that's very much what the Gambia is, which is why it turns out there are you can. You can quite easily get flights and stuff to what is essentially quite a small poor African country. Yeah. Mm, okay. No, it's yeah. okay, yeah. But I mean, well, I mean, at least you're getting married, I suppose, but uh, you never know. 
Could be true love. Yeah, probably. Like, you know, don't get me wrong, the numbers on that on <laughs> you know, probability trending towards zero. But yeah, probably why not? Hey, yeah, could be. Could be love. You never know. Um look, people get married for different reasons. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, if you're in a shit situation and you can help your family out, maybe you know, we're in a fortunate position living Absolutely in no the first world or whatever, yeah. or the global north where that isn't really a consideration for us as much whereas if you're you know in that kind of situation maybe it is a consideration maybe it means that your family will be able to get medical treatment when they need to and that kind of stuff so you know like no judgment on the kid but he just looks so scared <laughs> oh, yeah. i felt fucking yeah. sorry for him yeah no i understood yeah, yeah, I'm going to move swiftly on from there. Cause I yeah, but uh, you know, the, no, what, you know, we always say uh, we do the three E's on this podcast, which is entertain. The second one, inform, yeah. and the third one, we can't uh, spell. By the way, huh? We can't spell. Inform starts with an E. Okay, yeah, E N N form. Yeah, that's true. And um, what was the third E? Uh, excite, I would imagine. Excite. Yeah. Yeah, educate, that'll do. Yeah, so we were I was just doing a bit of education there yeah, for the, there for the I stuff. assume that's where you're going with that one. I forgot halfway through to be honest. Lost, well, lost, we lost should probably of... spend a bit more time educating ourselves before we start. I have the temerity to educate other people, shouldn't we? But there we go. I'll just I just kind of I had the visual memory of how scared that kid looked and I kind of lost I lost my trail of thought. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Understandable. I mean, I would have been scared of these people if I'd been in a pub with them. So God knows what he was like. I mean, you know, even going around drunken parts of Brighton at times, I yeah, headphones on, walking straight through. <laughs> I don't particularly. Want. Yeah, British people in packs can be uh, another thing. Oh yeah, oh, on the base. All right. Um, yeah, so team of UK dragon hunters are on an expedition in the Gambia to track down the mysterious creature known locally as the Ninky Nanka, believed to live in swamps and is, appears in folklore in many parts of West Africa. Described as having a horse-like face, long body with mirror-like scales and crest of skin on its head. Um, and the team leader, Richard Freeman, has told the BBC evidence so far was sketchy as most people died soon after seeing it. See, here's the problem. I reckon that's an excuse that people used to get out of marrying... Six-year-old divorcees from Burnley. <laughs> Record, yeah. <laughs> Killed by Ninky Nanka, sorry. But you still have to pay the dowry. Yeah, you still got to pay the dowry. Um, yeah, this is this was Oh, oh no, not another Ninky. Oh, yeah. that's, do you know what? That's that's the fourth husband to be that I've lost to Ninky Nanka. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, well, don't unlucky. worry about it. Next year, we'll come back. Yeah. So, to be fair, he does admit that the, its existence is very far-fetched indeed. Um, you know, they talk about the second-hand accounts varying wildly, from it looking like a crocodile or a snake to having wings and spitting fire. But he disputed a suggestion that the hunt was a waste of time and money. We didn't know yeah. anything of this before we came. We have to look into everything to see if there's a possibility that there's a real creature there, he told the BBC's Focus on Africa programme. Yep, not sure that's how science works. Yeah, you investigate unsubstantiated claims. Everything you got to, unless it, unless you investigate everything, then how do you know? How do you know? So cryptozoology search Neil, for animals. There's um, I don't know if you've heard this, but there's actually uh, behind our moon. There's a second moon that's made out of custard. It's uh, I've heard I've heard the rumor. Yeah. So I, you know, we better look into it. We better look into it. NASA, better get, getting, NASA need to get on this. Yeah, exactly. Well, we need to um, get ourselves all trained up as, as space lads and uh, yeah. Yeah, get one of Musk's. Touch. Yeah, one of them. Space or Blue Flux, Horizon or something. Or one of Richard Branson's ones, which looks like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, probably. Yeah. <laughs> It'll fall apart after the third Perfect. Flight. I'm sure it won't. I'm sure it, to the, the most rigorous standards of uh, It's been so no, he's stopped, hasn't he? And stop As searching then, yeah. galactic. Well, I think once they, I think it was a lot of that was a race to get up into. Well, yeah, I suppose it was a race a by rich mark. men to see who you know, had the, the most interesting penis. Yeah. 
It turns well, out really should, shouldn't they? Should all just whip them out and just get on with it? I, I imagine they're the kind. To... I imagine they're the kind. I'm not of saying them. it'd be a very impressive display. I imagine they're the anyway. kind of men who go into the cubicles and public toilets and sit down if they need a wee. I don't think. I don't think they want to get them out in front of other men. Fair enough. Well, you know, nothing, nothing, no shame or whatever in any other way. It's just when you're sort of no, metaphorically you're cool. waving it around. Yes, exactly. Right, so the team have interviewed one eyewitness so far, a park ranger from the Kiang West National Park who lived to tell the tale of his encounter three years ago. Mm-hmm. He described an immense animal 50 metres long by one metre wide, so it is quite skinny, um, that he watched for more than one hour before being taken ill. He put his survival down to a herbal potion given to him by an Islamic holy man. Later, according to the expedition's blog, after being shown pictures of various reptiles and mythical animals, the ranger said the creature's face most resembled that of a Chinese dragon. Mm. They've heard similar stories all over the Gambia, but mostly not first-hand eyewitnesses. It seems to be this thing, when you see the Ninkinanka, you'll die within a few weeks. Nice. They've taken back a sample of what they claim to be a Ninkinanka scale tested in the UK, but the initial investigation suggested it was a red herring, perhaps a bit of rotten celluloid film and not biological. <laughs> I think I read somewhere else that was what it turned out to be. It was just a bit of celluloid. So we haven't discounted the possibility there's flesh and blood ninking anchor in the swamps of West Africa. It's just at the moment the evidence is pointed to something more folkloric. So at least they're being honest about that. Yeah, I've got a um, nice little trip out of it. You got a trip out of it, yeah. Um, and I'm going to have a quick look in the Indy to see if there's anything. So there was a, an, an article covering the same thing, really, in the Independent. So but it's a lot longer and it's sort of, it's more about cryptozoology. So meet your husband while he was out there today. He doesn't get into that um, <laughs> side of it. No, there's, there's none of that. Um, and actually, something with the, this this does tie into a bit of tourism for Gambia oh. later on. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll quickly talk about that at the end. So I think that's quite nice. As we were saying before, you know, make some money out of these things. <clears throat> so, less fantastically, the team's leader, Richard Freeman, the Senator for Fourteen Zoology, suspects the Ninkin Anchor of being a species of colossal monitor lizard. But yeah. Whatever the truth, this is the first dedicated expedition to search for the animal. So yeah, he didn't have any um, sightings. They did get some the scale, which turned out to be pieces of right film, certainly not biological. He said, um, but they will test all samples. Oh, more encouraging the witnesses. So it looks like this one's um, after the BBC one. So a compelling chap called Papa Jinder had described a scene of devastation at a pumping station where the blog gushes. A ninky nank had destroyed several pipes. Mm. It continues. The mention of a ninky nanka had caused a panic among the workers, and they'd asked for a mirror. They thought that was the only way to get rid of the animals to show its own reflection. Well, works works against me, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, this is, this is why I have to keep turning my camera off and zoom calls. Um, the second time Papa Jinda came into contact with an ninky nanka was to prove fatal. After seeing it, he fell ill, claiming about pains in his legs and waist, and his hair fell out. He died two weeks later. There you go. So it's 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 seen as an imminent imminent death, either suddenly yeah. within the next four years. I mean that's quite a broad time scale. Well I know, but but that's one of the few aspects of the folklore that's consistent in all in all aspects is that people it's portent. generally die. Portents. Yeah, and then it just bangs on about it's like a H Rider Haggard tale. Goes on about cryptozoology. I mean it's a decent article, but it's more about cryptozoology. And he got into cryptozoology, Freeman, apparently, because he was with Doctor Who. Because of Doctor Who? Yeah. He he saw an episode where the Doctor was incarcerated on Earth and the monsters from the story were frightening because they were in a familiar setting. He was also worked as a zookeeper. He was head of reptiles at Twycross Zoo um, and had a brief stint as a grave digger. And he's also been out looking for the beast of Bodmin Moor, as you do. As you do. And then went to a curiosity shop. So apparently he lives in Dickensian in London. Yeah, um, the cur- yeah, the curios for his cabinet of curios. Exactly, and picked up a magazine of cryptozoology, and now he works for the magazine and hunts cryptids full time. I wonder how you get that get job. Get into it, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think we could, Neil, because there's quite a large back catalogue of us uh, saying that we don't believe it. Believe any of this stuff. No, I mean, you know, I'd go out, go out and have a look, though. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, in yeah, fourteen it's all from the American writer Charles Ford, but yeah. 
Du, 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 du. Just remember one other thing about um, camp. So the guys who have English sort of older women girlfriends the sort of in Gambia. So mm. like the women all come and see them as much as they can and send them money and stuff, right? It's kind of their living. Yeah. Uh, they are called bum boys. Fair enough. Do yeah. information what you will. Um, so, so they stay, they stay, they don't sort of move to Durham or whatever. Not all of them, no. No, some okay. of them are sort of so you get so you get this, don't you? And you get it in Turkey and stuff as well, where they get married and they just come over and see them like a well, no, not even get married. They'll kind of like oh, just if they're in a relationship, yeah, yeah, okay. They'll cool. so they'll sort of they'll have a girlfriend. Like you talk yeah. to guys that, like who work in bars and stuff in Turkey, and they'll kind of have English girlfriends, yeah, who kind of come out and see them a couple of times a year, or sometimes they'll have several, yeah. Um, yeah, you yeah, you do get that. Um and uh yeah, so it's the same in Gambia, except for there is an understanding that there's a financial aspect to it in the Gambia, which there isn't, isn't in, there. Okay. in Turkey. Well so there you go. Yeah, then just talked about how he's um actually references some of the things we've gone through before. So giant snakes in Thailand, death worms in Mongolia, that was a previous episode that we covered. Yep. And the Yetish Orang Pendek in Sumatra. I don't think we've gone through that one. No. Um, and he's, he works from oral testament and tries to strip away the mythical elements. So when people say fire breathing, they probably mean a flickering tongue. When they describe electricity crackling around the death worm, they may well see dew shining on a snake scale. So he's trying to be, you know, give reasonable mm. explanations. He doesn't think the Loch Ness monster is a dinosaur. It's more likely to have been a number of sterile male eels, which can grow to gigantic proportions. And British big cats are escaped release pets or circus animals. So that well, was, uh, we did know that. Yeah, we did a Beast of Bodmin uh, more, I think, didn't we? Or one of mm-hmm. those big cat stories. And he said, the monkey man of Calcutta is, in Freeman's opinion, just a monkey. It's a cultural psychological phenomenon. You wouldn't get me hunting for him. So there you go. He's not up for all, all things. Monkey again, man, the best Monkey one. man of Calcutta is, in, well, it's a, the legend is brilliant. Again, it's a previous. I know, it's Monkey Man of Delhi, we saw, we spoke about. Oh, okay. Who was on his roller skates. Yeah, Ooh, the Disco King. Disco King, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if the one in Calcutta is different. Maybe have a look at that at some point. But hmm. Anyway, um, so then it just, yeah, he sort of then just goes on about sort of cryptozoology stuff. It's not really much in this article about the Ninky Nanky so. Oh, yeah, and then it goes through various other ones. Okay, so that, that's kind of like bits from the expeditions, but I thought that'd be good to read out. So I'll just go through some sightings now. Um, so in 1911, when a lake near Banju was drained by British authorities in 1911, locals feared a dragon which was supposed to live in the depths of the lake. Owing to the belief that the only thing the dragon feared was its own reflection, the locals erected a mirror and it was never seen again. Handy. There you go. Yeah, yeah so there you go. 1935, we were talking about Dr. Um, Thomas Hardy Dale Rimple. He wrote about being disturbed one night by excited locals, made inquiries and was told that an inky anchor had been seen. Um, so he was the one that was talking about later on, but he couldn't search for it because of the infestation of mosquitoes. <laughs> 1943, a night watchman named Papaginda claimed to have seen a ninky anchor around what is now a buco, describing it as a huge animal in shining scales. And then in 1947, four years later, Papaginda saw it again, and then that's when he died. So that was the guy whose hair all fell out. And he saw right. it a second time. Well, I mean, he saw it a second time, didn't he? So, yeah. you know. Once, once, once bitten, you get away, twice, yeah. shy. Twice. Mm. Yeah. 1993, a stretch of the River Gambia was polluted by a black, foul-smelling substance which killed thousands of fish and caused illnesses amongst local people. At the time, one of the theories regarding <laughs> exactly. the cause of the pollution... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can tell... Yeah, B- BP... Uh, then yeah, definitely had not involved at all. Inv- invested in a search for the Ninky Nanka, okay, yeah. who, who obviously caused that. Yeah, it was the decayed remains of a dragon may have washed into the river by heavy rains. Absolutely. Not industry whatsoever. Not no. Nope. Um, also in 2002, um, some, somewhere between 2001 and 2003, a ninky anchor allegedly caused a lorry to crash during heavy rains. Right. Again, nothing to do with the rains or the bad driving. Or, or the spliffs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in 2003, a park ranger named 
Momodu claimed to have seen a ninkin anchor less than three years before the 2006 expedition in Kiang West. He saw the animal come out of the hole in the ground and watched it crawl around for more than an hour. He became ill and afflicted with lesions about two weeks afterwards, but then he was the guy who was cured by the imam who gave him a herbal potion. Okay. So there you go. So he's been spotted a few times. The descriptions are, you know, wildly differing um, and no evidence, no firm evidence thus far. Some okay. eyewitness accounts and a bit of celluloid that was given as a scale. Um, but there's a story of the Ninky Naka. So I'm just going to... Um, well, so, and I would just like to say, if anyone does want to go to the Gambia, obviously, like the, you know, there's that some sort of stuff, but uh, it's actually a really lively country, and the people there are really nice. And uh, you know, I can highly recommend going to the Paradise Beach Club in Serracunda, which is where the Gin Flynn is still on the menu. Oh, okay, and I'm just quickly going to refer to a National Geographic article called "Exploring the Gambia's New Ninky Nanka Trail." So the aim is to to draw travellers from the Golden Coast, which I assume is where the beaches and things where you were, towards this lesser explored interior. Um, so the idea is they're sort of piggybacking off of the um, mm. off of the sort of the, the legends, just anything the folklore to sort of like get people coming in where just there's, there's less they need, they, they need the money, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, go and have a look up the national. I won't. It's a big article, so I won't sort of go through that. But uh, yeah, there's lots of other interesting things as well, like chimpanzees and things like this but uh yeah it looks like a you know yeah the most annoying thing for us because we had to leave halfway through the holiday is that <clears throat> the first half of the holiday the plan was we'd just beach it and like it was just before payday so we didn't have yeah. loads of money i mean we had like enough to eat out and do all that kind of stuff and the second half of it we were going to start doing more kind of safaris and that kind of thing yeah yeah but we <laughs> You didn't get we to had, do that. We had to leave the country the day which I got paid. So, but it's really weird because you can't um, you can't get the Gambian currency abroad. Okay, for whatever reason, like it's a devalued currency or something. So you have to do it like you you have to negotiate and do like do like with that. some guy in a shed like when you get there, and. Um, yeah, because the current because they've had like hyperinflation or whatever, like with the money, I kind of hands over a few hundred quid. I literally had a hold all with cash in it. It was really cool. <laughs> yeah, I've got a picture of it. It's like that's obviously the most folding money I'll ever have, even though it wasn't worth very much. Yeah, it just yeah. A re- yeah. So I just had that and two cans of cigarettes in a hold all. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> what well, is another reason to go out there? Yeah, apparently direct flights from Gatwick. So, yeah. Uh... That's what we got to. Um, yeah. We stayed in Kotu, which is nice. Yeah. So there you go. You know, um, if you get a chance, go and visit the Gambia and uh, go on the Ninky Nanka But do it for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting it to go in that territory when I looked up this story earlier on. I've no, got, but yeah, I no, mean, I'm going to be telling me about that now. I've forgotten about. I it. can only, I can only relay my experience. No, no, fair enough. Yeah, you know that's not nothing against anyone in the Gambia. Yeah. So I slightly question the moral fortitude of some people who visit the Gambia. But that is. Way. Yeah, but it's the same with men to Thailand or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, all kinds of shit happens. No, it's yeah. you know. Well, it's a complicated place. To go. <laughs> yeah, Pe- let's not, people no. be horny. I think yeah, that's the no, lesson to learn. Stressing things, but yeah, let's uh, so light over that. So, let's move into our scoring, shall we? Ninki Nanka. So, Neil, spookiness. What do you think? Well, a massive dragon type creature comes crawling out, can pollute rivers. We you die when you sort of see it. Well, yeah, I mean, probably more heavy industry. Number goes up. Um, yeah, no, it's, I, I think it would be pretty pretty scary to run into. Um, you know, the fact that just seeing it means kind of like you're likely to die. That would be pretty, uh, pretty... I mean, it doesn't... There's not, like... It's smashed up, like, a, some, some pipe work or whatever, or, you know some refinery or something like that. But uh, there's not a lot of stories about them attacking human beings, but just by seeing it, you can die. So, or, you know, there's a good chance if you don't get sort of like a holy man to give you some tonic or whatever. Yeah. 
I'd like to. They should be marketing that tonic as well. I'll tell you what, Chris. Holy man, tonic. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that's quite quite spooky. I'll give it a seven. Seven. So the thing is, like, um, a certain death. Obviously, like, sort of by the coast and stuff. It's it's got a bit more towns and stuff, but the the internal part of it is quite. It's still quite like jungly, mm, yeah. Um, you know, and, and sort of fairly sparsely populated. You know, you've kind of got little towns here and there, yeah, and yeah. Not many roads and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's quite. I mean, it's not a big place, but I mean, it's not. It's not. You know, there were there were definitely like things that could could be in this kind of area that you mm. know because it's not that explored. Um, yeah. So I would imagine if you, I'd imagine it's something if you were Gambian, that you might that you might well be kind of scared because you would have had it passed down, and it, you know you'd yeah, be yeah. like you might spot something out the corner of your eye in the river. Receive wisdom, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a portent of death rather than it attacks you or anything. So I don't know if that's more or less spooky. Um, I'm going to say less, so I'm going to give it a five for spookiness now. Um, believability. So, uh, could there be could there be something that exists, but it you know th- that has been given this sort of title of like dragon monster that kind of stuff, but it's like a big salamander or something or monitor lizard. Yes, there could be, um, you know, there could be unfound stuff, definitely. So that's that's believable. Do I believe it's a – well, you know, what's your definition of a dragon? Like there's sort of – I mean, dragons are based on finding dinosaur bones, aren't they? Mm. Dragons aren't a thing. Um, so I don't, think there's a, I don't think there's a magical beast, but, you know, there could well be something as yet – uh, unclassified by the West, which it's a, common, it's a common myth. I mean, I think it even predates the sort of finding of dinosaur bones because it was very, yeah, you know, going back to antiquity and all the rest of it. Like dragons have been a common theme. I don't quite know if they've come in. It's mm. being scared of serpents and stuff. I go, I guess I don't really know, but uh, yeah, you know, it's been a common theme throughout the world. So yeah, thousands of years, isn't it? Yeah, so I th- I'm going to give it an eight for believability now because there could be something out there, although I don't necessarily attribute fire breathing, et cetera, to it because it isn't found elsewhere in nature. No, and the thing with the believability is, is there's just the, the description is very worldly. So yeah. could there be something out there? Yeah, it's possible that there's some, you know, and I think what the zoology chap is basically saying is, you know, these things, as, as with all folklore, it takes on a life of its own. I mean, I'm, I'm less inclined to <clears throat> to think that there probably is, but hey, you never know. There might, there might be something that's you know, unexplored or whatever. That's you know, but it was probably slightly more prosaic when they, they did actually mm. track it down. I think I seem to remember reading somewhere it's supposedly Komodo dragons weren't. Um, no, they were discovered quite late. They were discovered quite mythical, late. And yeah. Regarded as a fictional kind of sighting until somebody actually found them, and now they're, they're reasonably easy to find. So and the lost city of Flontar. Yeah, so uh, so you never know. So I'll give it a five. Five. Uh, narrative premise now. Uh, is it the, is it the new Nessie? <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't, Nessie's got that much. It's, just, it's, no. it's um in terms of narrative to it, it's uh yeah, there's not there's not loads here. I don't think it's. I mean it, it's got that whole kind of thing with like a basilisk, it doesn't even come out can... on a mo- on like on a full moon or anything. Yeah, there's it's not... just hanging about. Yeah, it just kind of like sort of hangs around. I mean, I, I don't know. It's um, it's quite. I quite like the fact that it's, it's in a different location. It's kind of like um, yeah. It's, it's unique to kind of like that part of West Africa. That's 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 mm. quite cool. Um, you know, that gives it gives it a bit more of an interesting vibe. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's it, the problem again. The problem is the descriptions are so wildly varied. Um, and unless there's loads this, of different ones. And there's mm-hmm. lots of different varieties, yeah. Yeah, like a peacock, it can do all sorts of things to, yeah, scare, stroke, attract um, people. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, it's not, I don't think there's... It's lots. a number. I'm going to give it another five. It's it, it's interesting because of the, the, the variety of descriptions of things, but I don't know, yeah, you'd have to have gotten onto something. 
Yeah, so I don't think there's much of a story here. Uh, I'll give it some points because um, it's, yeah, it's it's a creature from kind of a different area. Um, you know, and I, I I always like hearing that that there are, wherever you go in the world, there's always stuff that's quite similar that humans yeah. think they're seeing. And so there's obviously some kind of underlying thing there. Um, probably back to when we were sort of monkeys. Um, so, uh, I mean, that that's interesting. But there isn't, like, yeah, there isn't a great story. There isn't kind of, like, why, you know, was it, it was created by, you yeah, know, the, not, the gods or anything like that. No, it's not about it. It's, it's, it's basically just seen as an animal, basically. So, you know, what story has that got? Not much. Um, so I'll give it a three for narrative premise and reach. So it sounds like the Gambia is trying to ratchet it up. It sounds like that, you know, for the for the tourist thing, which you know is Why not? eminently sensible. Um, I don't remember encountering it when I was there, but that was however many years ago, 12 years ago or something. Um, and they had other things to worry about, like having that terrible dictator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I yeah, you're like, I think it's maybe known in Senegal, and you said Guinea as well, was it? Uh, I can't remember. Um, there was, there was another, I've, I've Guinea Bissau. Now. Yeah, probably Guinea Bissau, uh, to the south. <laughs> Um, so I mean, it's known. It's known in that area of West Africa. I don't know that it's very well known outside of that. So, uh, but it has. I I think that it's one that's probably goes back a long time that it's been spoken about. It's one of those ancient ones. So, because of its reach through time, I'm going to give it a five. Now, okay. Um... Yeah, I didn't see much in terms of none of the sightings and things go back past uh, 20th century. Um, didn't see loads of history, but yeah, you're probably right. But wouldn't be surprised if it did sort of go back quite a bit more than that. Um, it's had a few books written about it and stuff like this, and obviously you had the sort of expedition to go and try and find it, but that's probably more of a kind of forty and jolly than uh, you know, probably go all over the place mm. looking for various different things. Um, I suppose if you can get it. Well, yeah, and no, you know want to raise their own profile as well to an extent i would imagine um yeah i wonder how the funding get gets got or whatever but uh, i don't know just um good luck to them um but yeah no so yeah reach was probably not that high i yeah i don't i don't know that this is going to be very well known i'll probably have to give it a three actually i think um yeah i don't know how how ancient it is and i i think it's probably more of a localized one but uh, okay yeah why don't you come across by searching for it more than anything Gives us an overall score of 41. Slap bang in that motherfucking bell curve. Um, not too bad. Not too bad. A um, bit different. So just to say again, the email address, which I've been getting wrong, is herburb.legends, with an S, dot podcast at gmail.com. Uh, should you want to get in touch. And we're also on Twitter, at Legends Urbane. Uh, so it's called can... X now, Chris. Is it? <laughs> Not for anyone who uses it. Uh, yeah, we'll have to sit. Like, we'll, we'll, I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see which one of the pretenders to the crown gets out in front, like Blue Sky or whatever, before... Oh, I think threads. it's the problem. I don't think there is, like, one that's... I mean, I, my money, if anyone was going to, would be would have been on threads, but uh, it doesn't seem to be... Uh, so I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with. Yeah, I think it's worth Twitter for now. It's where people go for them. Oh um, yeah, and the amount of uh, <laughs> the amount of follows that we get from uh, webcam girls is is unbelievable. I mean, maybe we should change this to a webcam girl podcast with the amount of webcam girls which follow us. No, I imagine that's what happens with any account. Yes, yes, because yeah. it's a bin fire now, <laughs> and it's just bots. <laughs> Um, Spend a lot of time muting on that channel. Cool. All right, guys. Well, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this more sedate than usual one. 
and uh, we will be back same time next week. Uh, look after yourselves and uh, goodbye. Goodbye.